ever heard of Berkeley or not, but Berkeley is not a Bible college. <laughs> so here I was on the airplane about that far away from this guy, and we started talking about creation and evolution. Everybody I sit by on the airplane wants to talk about that, so I talk about it with him. And he said he believed in evolution. I said, yes, sir, I figured that. You have to to teach at Berkeley. I said, tell me, sir, if you believe in evolution, how did the world get here? He said, oh, it came from the Big Bang. I said, really? I'd like to hear about this. He said, you're a science teacher and you have never heard of the Big Bang? I said, oh, yes, sir, I've heard a lot about the Big Bang. And I believe in the Big Bang, but my Big Bang is a lot different than yours. I said, you tell me about your Big Bang and then I'll tell you about my Big Bang. And so the professor took off on one of those answers that looked like it came straight from the textbook. He said, well, <clears throat> Mr. Hovind, I believe about 18 or 20 billion years ago, that's a long time. All the matter in the universe. That's a lot of stuff. By the way, the word universe comes from two Latin words, uni, which means single, and verse, which means a spoken sentence. Did you know we live in a single spoken sentence? God said, let there be. Now that'll preach, man. There's a sermon in there someplace right there, okay? And if your pastor can't find it, he ain't got no preaching him at all, okay? All the matter in the universe was concentrated into one very dense, very hot region that may have been much smaller than a period on this page. Say what? Everything in the universe squished into a dot smaller than a period on a page? Wow. That's one crowded dot. And heavy, too. <laughs> hey, it ain't the first time it happened, boys and girls. This textbook says, Someday, after many billions of years, all the matter and energy will once again be packed into a small area, no larger than the period at the end of this sentence. Then, another big bang will occur. It happens every 80 to 100 billion years. Can you believe they cut down a tree to print that? <laughs> Where's Al Gore when you need him? Hmm, that's what I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> and why did you guys send Al Gore to Washington? You had him here, you know. But no. This textbook author was brilliant. I could not believe how smart this guy was. He said, Boys and girls, nothing really means nothing. You have to be at least that smart to write a book. He said, not only matter and energy would disappear, but also space and time. However, physicists theorize that from the state of nothingness, the universe began in a gigantic explosion. What? Yes, boys and girls, you see, one day nothing exploded. And here we are. <laughs> we could spend three days talking about the Big Bang Theory. They used to say the thing that exploded was a few light years in diameter. And then they said, oh no, it's only... 275 million miles. And they said, oh no, it's only 71 million miles. They keep getting it smaller, and now they're saying nothing exploded. Wow, Discover Magazine here a couple years ago said, where did everything come from? Boys and girls, the universe burst into something from absolutely nothing. Zero, nada. As it got bigger, it became filled with even more stuff that came from absolutely nowhere. How is that possible? Ask Alan Guth. His theory will explain everything. Wow, I've got to meet this Alan Guth guy. Alan Guth said in Scientific American, the observable universe could have evolved from an infinitesimal region. In the Hebrew, that's a dot. He said, it's then tempting to go one step further and speculate that the entire universe evolved from literally nothing. You see, boys and girls, we all came from a dot, and the dot came from nothing. <laughs> and they call that science and put it in a science journal? I think I'd call that a fairy tale and put it in the garbage. I said, Professor, uh, what happened to your dot? He said, well, 20 billion years ago, all the dirt in the solar system was drawn into this little bitty tiny dot, and it was spinning. It spun faster and faster, and all of a sudden, shh, boom, it exploded, big bang. And the pieces that flew off became galaxies and sun, moon, stars, and here we are, you know, people, nothing but stardust. I said, sir, can I ask you a couple of questions, please? He said, sure, what do you want to know? You know, we got a three-hour flight sitting that far away from each other on the airplane, and I said, well, sir, I got a question. Uh, you said 20 billion years ago all the dirt got together for the big squish and the big spin and the big bang. Where did all the dirt come from? You know, who made matter? He said, we don't know that for sure. I said, okay, now, sir, hold it. If I told you that I believe about 6,000 years ago God created the heaven and the earth, then you're going to say, and where did God come from? 
And I have no idea. But you said 20 billion years ago there was a big bang and you don't know where the dirt came from. So basically I believe in the beginning God and you believe in the beginning dirt. <laughs> don't tell me my theory is religious and your theory is scientific. <laughs> no, 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 they're both religious. The news media tries to make it look like it is science versus religion. No, it's not. It's not science versus religion. This is two religions. Evolution and creation are both religious. You have to believe in one or the other. The difference is the evolution religion is tax supported. That's the difference. One of many differences. By the way, these two timelines, it's the same thing right here behind me. On the top timeline, every inch represents 150 years. Abe Lincoln was not even president one inch ago. Okay? If I was to show you what 20 billion years looks like at the same scale as the top chart, I'd have to have a, this chart on the bottom to be this scale. This one would have to be 2,100 miles long. That's from Pensacola to Portland, Oregon. I don't want to carry a chart that big, so I made a new scale for the other one. Okay. The professor said he did, he did not know where the matter came from. I said, well, sir, could you tell me where the laws came from? This universe is run by laws. You know, gravity, centrifugal force, inertia, Boyle's law, Cole's law. You can eat that with potato salad. Okay. There's all kinds of laws in the universe. Where did the laws come from? And by the way, why aren't the laws still evolving? Hmm? Do you ever think about that? I mean, why is gravity always the same? Why don't you weigh 10 pounds more one day? You say, well, I do. Well, that's for different reasons, okay? But uh, where did the energy come from anyway, huh? Who bought the gas to run this machine? He said, the professor said, I don't know any, we don't know any of those things. I said, sir, could I ask you another question? He said, sure, what else would you like to know? Else? What do you mean else? You haven't told me nothing yet. I said, sir, does Berkeley uh, have a merry-go-round? How many of you know what a merry-go-round is? You go round, round, round to your puke. You've been on them before? He said, no, we don't have a merry-go-round at Berkeley. I said, you really ought to get one. You know, you could learn some good science on a merry-go-round. If you put some fourth graders on there, any fourth graders in here, last year or next year, fourth graders, I know it's summertime here. All right, I like fourth graders. I spent the best five years of my life in the fourth grade. That's before they diagnosed ADD. <clears throat> By the time my brother was in fourth grade, we all knew what he was going to be when he got out of high school. 32. <laughs> well, we're going to put some fourth graders on the merry-go-round and get the high school football team out there to get it spinning clockwise as fast as it will possibly go. Now, if you have a digital watch, you may not know what clockwise means. I'll tell you later. We're going to spin the merry-go-round clockwise. The kids are going to go through four phases. They start off in phase one. They're screaming at the football players. Come on, let's go faster, faster. Can't you go any faster? You get up around 30 miles an hour, the kids enter phase two where they stop screaming. They just quietly concentrate on trying to hang on for dear life. You get up around 30 miles an hour, the kids enter phase, uh, 60 miles an hour, they enter phase three where they start screaming again, but now they're screaming, stop, stop, please slow down. Don't stop though, keep going faster and faster. When you get to about 100 miles an hour, you should enter phase four. That's where the kids begin to fly off the merry-go-round. Now, when this happens, you will notice a very interesting phenomena of physics. If the merry-go-round is going clockwise, when the kid flies off, the kid will be spinning clockwise until he encounters resistance, like a tree or a pole. That's because of a law in physics known as the conservation of angular momentum. See, if a spinning object breaks apart, the pieces that fly off are going to spin the same direction because the outside is moving faster than the inside. And we could talk all day about the conservation laws if you'd like, but the professor said, yes, I know about the conservation laws. I said, well, good, sir, then let me ask you a question. If the universe began as a spinning dot, like you said, why do two planets spin backwards, and probably three? He got real quiet, puzzled look on his face. I said, sir, why do eight out of 91 known moons spin backwards? Why do Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune have moons going both directions at the same time? Huh. Why is the sun 98% hydrogen and helium, but the other planets are less than 1% hydrogen and helium? And why are these nine planets so different from each other? If it all came from a big bang, I mean, what's, why are they all so different? Very different compositions. And why do some whole galaxies spin backwards? CNN did an article, Goofy Galaxy Spins in Wrong Direction. I said, sir, why are these things going backwards? He said, I don't know. Why do you think they're going backwards? 